Imagine you're using Workers Unbound to complete a resource-intensive task. Maybe you've written an image processor or some sort of complex algorithm. It can be difficult to audit your worker's performance and find out where it's spending the most CPU time. That's why we're launching a beta version of Wrangler Inspect. We're beginning to integrate the workers platform with the Chrome developer tools, and starting today, you can use Wrangler Inspect to get a CPU profile of your worker. To do this, first make sure you're on the most recent version of Wrangler. You can update by going to your terminal and either typing npm update-g, Cloudflare slash Wrangler, if you use npm, or cargo install Wrangler dash dash force, if you use cargo. Once Wrangler is up to date, we can go ahead and make a new project with Wrangler Generate. Let's CD into that project and open it up in our IDE. As you can see, Wrangler Generate has given us a bare bones application. There's a license, code of conduct, wrangler.toml file, and an index.js containing our application data. We're just going to be editing the index.js file today. To save some time, I wrote a little bit of JavaScript beforehand. We've just got a function called timer, which sleeps for a given number of milliseconds, and another function called sleep between, which will count from 0 to 100, sleeping for 100 milliseconds between each iteration. This gives us a nice slow function to find when we run our CPU profile. With this function saved, we can go to our terminal and run wrangler dev dash dash inspect. You'll see some new instructions for configuring Chrome DevTools. Let's open our worker in one tab and go to chrome colon slash slash inspect in another. You can see the worker is working correctly. It sleeps for a few seconds and then it generates its hello worker message. In the other tab, we can click on configure and then add our new localhost port, localhost colon 9230. Now we see the Wrangler inspect process showing up. Clicking on inspect will open up the dev tools. At the time of this video, Wrangler only supports the console, sources, and profiler tab. We can start with the profiler tab. Let's go ahead and click start, and then go back to our workers tab and refresh the page. Refreshing this tab causes the worker to run again, but this time it's captured by the dev tools. Let's wait for it to finish and then go back to our dev tools window and click stop. We've got three different choices for viewing CPU data. A tree, which is top down, heavy, which is bottom up, and chart. Clicking on chart brings us to a flame chart where we can clearly see every function call and how long they took. My best advice for finding slow functions is to look for the last long function in a stack, since each function's total runtime is determined by the runtime of all functions it calls. We want to find the one with the longest self runtime, so the last big one before a function either finishes or splits into smaller calls. Here we can clearly see that sleep between is our culprit. Another quick way of spotting the slowest function in a worker is to use the heavy view. This lets you sort by self runtime or total runtime. Sorting by self runtime and ignoring any items in parentheses will get you our answer. Another nice feature is that after running a CPU profile, clicking on the sources tab will show you the source code, but now beside each function, you'll see data on how long it took to run. This can be nice while scrolling through a file with many function calls. The last feature that I wanted to show is that console logs and errors now show up in the DevTools console. Let's go back to our program and make an intentional typo. Now we'll let this rebuild via Wrangler, and when it's done, we can refresh the page and see a Cloudflare error. Unlike before, we can now go back into the DevTools, and on both the Sources panel, we'll see the line of code that threw the error, and the Console panel will give us lots of details about it.